that may be it. Okay, let's get started. This is the world's greatest fairy tales that I'm reading from. And it is a treasure of all kinds of stories. And it's by Danbury Press. And it has lots and lots of stories in it. So today, the first one we're going to be reading is The Ugly Duckling. So, let's get started. And yeah. let's see we're going to do The Ugly Duckling. Once upon a time, in a tall grass of green canal, a mother duck sat patiently hatching her eggs. At last she heard the first egg crack, and then the second, and soon six fluffy yellow ducklings were hatched into the world. Only one large egg was left unhatched in the nest. Mother watched it anxiously and was relieved when it too began to crack open. But her relief changed to dismay when out hopped the ugliest duckling she had ever seen. Instead of being small and round and soft and yellow like the other ducklings, he was large, awkward, and gray. He seemed to grow uglier every day, but he was very kind and friendly to everyone, even though his brothers and sisters were ashamed of him and all the ducks in the canal laughed at him. That's no duckling, they crackled meanly. He's probably the worthless young turkey cock. Only his mother loved him and defended him. He's really not so ugly when you look at him closely. He's quite pretty, she kept on insisting. Carefully, she caught him, taught him everything she taught her other children, and refused to leave him behind when she took them for their first swim in lesson. Quack, she said proudly. See how beautiful he swims? Better than all the others. No one can say now that he's not a duckling. But the other ducks were not all impressed. And then his mother lined up her ducklings and took them all to visit the barnyard. His brothers and sisters were so ashamed that they did not want him along. And it was even worse in the barnyard when all the new animals he met scorned and ridiculed him. Even the pigs snorted at him, and the geese honked at him viciously. Leave him alone, cried his mother. He's not doing any harm. They were just mean. He's too ugly to look at, and we shall tease him all we like, they answered cruelly. And as they kept right on honking and snorting, he's not handsome, I'll admit, replied his mother, stroking him gently and scratching his neck. But he's good and kind, and he's still young. I'm sure he'll outgrow this stage soon and end up just like the others and even stronger. The little ducklings did not believe her words and knew that she was heartbroken because he was different and so ugly. She became sadder and sadder as time went on and the teasing became worse and worse. 
The ducks bit at him. The hens pecked at him. The geese chased him. Even the little girl who fed the poultry kicked him. He was the laughing stock of the whole barnyard. No matter where he turned, he met meanness and cruelty. He tried to hide, but whenever, wherever he went, someone found him and teased him. Some more, finally, he could stand all that crackling and squawking no longer. So he jumped over the barnyard fence and ran away. He kept on running, even though he really had no idea where he was going. Things were not much better outside the barnyard either, because even the wild creatures ran away from him. I guess I'm so ugly, everyone's afraid of me, he quacked miserably to himself. And he found some wild ducks and geese for, for company for a while. But one day, these friendly birds were shot by hunters and carried off by some fierce-looking hunting dogs. But dogs ignored and scared little duckling hiding in the tall grass nearby. I guess I'm even too ugly for them to take, he sighed. Oh, he was not happy. Not happy at all. The poor duckling feared that the dogs and the hunters might come back, so he ran away from the pond and kept on running until he came to a little hut in the woods where a very old lady lived with her hen and cat. She loved them both dearly because the hen laid tasty eggs for her and the cat purred constantly to cheer her. The old lady's eyesight was so poor that she thought the duckling was a full-grown duck because he was so oversized. How lucky I am, she cried, to have a beautiful hen to lay beautiful hen eggs for me. And now I have a fine duck to lay some fine duck eggs. She brought the duckling into her house and treated him kindly. But the cat felt himself to be the master of the house. And the hen thought she was the mistress and both were jealous of their new guest. Can you really lay an egg? asked the hen. No, answered the duckling honestly. Then what on earthly use are you to anyone? snapped the hen, who proudly laid her daily egg just to show off. Can you purr? asked the cat. I can quack replied the duckling, but I can't purr. Then, of what earthly good are you to anyone, sneered the cat, purring loudly just to show off. Then both of them began to torment the poor duckling, so that once again he had to run away. Oh, poor duckling. Good to be out of that house and in the wide world again, the duckling said to himself. Though he was so lonely, he did not believe a word he was saying. But he soon found a nice pond to swim in and amused himself splashing and diving and chasing insects and catching minnows. After a time, however, the water grew colder and the wind stronger, and the leaves began to turn yellow, and then brown, and autumn arrived, just before winter came, and the duckling heard a strange sound in the sky. He looked into the sunset and saw a flock of graceful swans 
flying over him. He had never seen any creatures so beautiful and star stared in wonder at their snow white plumage, their splendid wings, and their long slender necks. The duckling did not know that these birds were swans, but he knew he loved them more than he had ever loved anything in his life before. He did not envy them either because it would have been beyond his wildest dreams to wish such beauty for himself. He just watched them worshipfully as they flew off to warmer lands across the sea. Although the long cold winter, he remembered their beauty with pleasure. And the winter was long and so very cold, the duckling had to keep swimming around in circles or the water would have froze him in, a, in tight. But still, as the ice on the pond grew thicker, it became harder and harder for him to swim at all. His legs were numb from cold, worn out at last. He laid there stiff, frozen right into the ice, but a kind peasant soon found him, broke the ice around him, and carried him home. In the cozy house, the man's children placed him gently by the fireplace to warm himself up. The children wanted only to play with the duckling when he revived, but he thought that they, like everyone else, wanted to torture him for his ugliness, so he fled in terror and ran for his ugliness straight out the front door into the cold and snow again. Somehow the duckling managed to live through the rest of the hard winter, and when spring came, he felt bigger and stronger than one day as he was swimming happily. Coming towards him, he saw three of the gorgeous birds he had so worshipped. I'll go over to those beautiful creatures, he thought, and they will surely kill me because I'm so ugly. But I would rather be killed by such kindly birds than live on only to be bitten by ducks, pecked by hens, and chased by everyone else. So bowing his head humbly, he swam towards the graceful swans. Aren't they pretty? As he drew closer, bowing his head even lower, he saw his reflection in the water and gasped. He was no longer an ugly duckling, but a stately swan with snow-white plumage, splendid wings, and long slender neck. The other swans glided towards him, not to kill him, but to greet him and stroke his neck. Children ran to the water edge. Look, they cried, there's a new swan. Yes, said their parents, and the new one is the most beautiful of all. And everyone gathered around to admire him, the new swan hid his head modestly, and thought, I never dreamed I could ever know such happiness when I was the despised ugly duckling. And now he's the most beautiful duckling. 
He is the graceful swan. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story. And tune in next time for more. Have a great day. Bye.